let's get to what they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I say that almost jokingly, but you un- we understand. Um, the government shutdown was averted this weekend. Many Republicans are upset to the point that they want to remove um, they want to remove the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, for working with the Democrats. I, I want to get I'm going to get to the specifics in a moment, but let's talk for a moment in this bigger picture. This is where I think people have to have a conversation with themselves. If you're a Republican, how did you feel about Senator Kirsten Cinema when she was a Democrat not going with her party and saying, I do not agree that we should end the filibuster? I don't agree. There were certain things that she refused to, to vote along party lines, so much so that the Democratic Party in Arizona censured her. It could cost her a great deal, maybe even her Senate seat. Now, I don't necessarily think that's going to be true, but she's got a Democrat challenger now. We know a Republican challenger is coming in. It's you know Right now, we know Mark Lamb, the sheriff of Pinal County, is a candidate. Rumors are that in just a few days and about a week from now, actually 11 days from, or I'm sorry, eight days from now, it's rumored that Carrie Lake is going to announce her campaign for the United States Senate. So what Senator Sinema did was for the good of the country, and I think many Republicans believe that, and they say that was a great thing to do. But when a Republican says, we have to do this for the good of the country, you may not agree with them, but to rush out and say that you want to kick them out of office. So uh, Representative Schweiker, David Schweiker, was on, uh, was on this morning with Arizona's Morning News, and they asked him, did you kick the can down the road? The day before we actually had a package that I voted for and the vast majority of Republicans, but we had 21 of our brothers and sisters who voted against it. And that actually, it, it, it had spending rollbacks back to pre-pandemic. It had the deficit commission that I've worked on for years. It also had the entire border package. So not just border funding, but the entire you know um, drafting. So this was a true funding bill. And it failed, and it failed because of Republican votes. So he's a bit upset about that. He said we're in a tough time financially. But now uh, Matt Gates, Representative Gates, is talking about how they are going to get rid of uh, uh, McCarthy if they can. And this is him. I want you to listen to him talking about him not working for the Republican conference. It is becoming increasingly clear who the Speaker of the House already works for, and it's not the Republican conference. So I would say this to, and I would I would say that I to be very honest with you, and you may not like hearing this. I would agree with Matt Gates on most things, but when he says it's it's clear that McCarthy doesn't work for the Republican conference, good. McCarthy as Speaker of the House is not supposed to work for the Republican conference. He's a Republican, and I would venture to guess that he would think that Republican principles are what's best for the country. But Representative McCarthy or whoever the Speaker of the House is is supposed to be. What doing what's right for the country. I did not like one thing Nancy Pelosi did as Speaker of the House because I thought she was way too partisan. Uh, I thought her investigations into the Trump administration were partisan-driven. All of these things, as Republicans, we complain about the partisans on the left, and we complain about their lack of flexibility. We complain about their lack of working with the other side. We complain about these things, and then when somebody that's in the Republican Party said, we have to do something different here, and if I have to work with Democrats, I will, then you're going to oust them. That's the thing that gets me here, is Gates wants to get rid of McCarthy. And again, I have no reason to defend Kevin McCarthy in his speaker's role. None. I'm just looking at this from an American perspective. You're not going to find anybody that is more um, entrenched in Republican beliefs than I am. And there's a lot of people that don't like it, but that's what I believe. I believe small government and the principles of the Republican Party, Party are what's best for America. But you also are in a room with uh, hundreds of other people, with 435 other people, uh, 34 other people, and you don't get to be the dictator. Not even the president's the dictator. And that was by design from the founding fathers. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You have a huge amount of power as the Speaker of the House. You're really the most powerful person in Washington being the Speaker of the House. And to exclude the other side when the margins are thin... It it doesn't seem to be realistic, and especially when he's trying to avert a shutdown. Now, whether or not this was a good thing to do, I'm not even arguing that either. 
but disagreeing with him so you're going to oust him is just another indicator, in my opinion, of immaturity. So here's what Schweikert had to say. Schweikert was asked this morning on Arizona's Morning News about the rift between Gates and McCarthy, and here's what Schweikert said. It's absolutely bizarre and stupid, but uh, this is what happens when you have people. Mr. Gates apparently wants to run for governor of Florida and believes this raises his status, and he, he's going to try to raise all sorts of money on this online. And there becomes the incentives for focusing on the actual issues of America – um, have become sort of distorted. Do you think Speaker McCarthy will be around for the next vote on the budget? I think Mar- I think McCarthy will will survive. This is again, uh, uh, and I don't I don't like whining just about my side of the aisle because that's not everybody. I'm, there's a lot of people out there that could care less about what happens with Republicans. But my complaint on my side of the aisle is this: we continue to fight with each other. Instead of fighting with the opposition, if we don't get our way, we behave in a way that is immature. You are part of a bigger room of people. You have to work in the situation you're in and stop pretending you're in a situation you want it to be. You don't live in a utopian world, the House of Representatives. You don't live in this utopian society. The Senate is never going to pass some of the things you want, even if you pass them in the House. They're not going to pass in the Senate. You have to deal realistically. You have the bully pulpit because you have the majority. That's terrific. But as you have to work with bills that have to also have a matching bill in the Senate, you got to get together in conference. You've got to get them put together. You've got to get them signed and get them to the president's desk and get the president to sign off on it. You are dealing with the reality of where you stand. You've got uh, Representative Jamal Bowman. He should be the big story. You want to talk about a Republican point of view, I'll give you one. Representative uh, Jamal Bowman decided that the answer to stopping the Republicans from getting away with what he didn't want them to get away with was to pull the fire alarm in the House of Representatives. It's juvenile at worst. It's criminal, or at best, it's criminal at worst. What he did was pull a fire alarm could have caused a lot of uh, panic, could have caused a lot of damage, and he was trying to stop the government from moving forward. He should be laughed at, he should be ridiculed, and he should be punished. He's not even a blip on the radar. Why? Because of this fight between two very prominent Republicans, once again, that steals the show. When Matt Gates says it's obvious he doesn't work for the Republican conference, he doesn't. He works for the United States Congress and the American people. Uh, You may disagree with him, but he doesn't work for you. He doesn't work for you.